Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Xbox. So on E3 has been and gone and we found out about a load of brand new games that are going to be coming to our Xbox One. So we wanted to keep you guys updated on all the games coming out over the next few months. So here are 18 games to look forward to. I finally got my grubby paws on Destiny 2 last week and it did not disappoint. The scale of the campaign set pieces are up there with Bungie's best work on Halo and the new character development make this a total pleasure to play. It's very rare for me to fall in love with a grenade launcher in games, I'm more of a rocket man myself, but I had so much fun with this new toy in Destiny 2 that it took real discipline to try out other weapons. I also got to play with the new warlock super called Dawnblade, it's a sword that fires out freaking fire. Honestly, Destiny Destiny 2 is such an improvement on the first game. Bungie have been working really hard to make sure there's more of a story campaign experience, with epic missions broken up with Hollywood quality cutscenes, and side quest adventures to reward guardians who spend time picking over all the new areas. Once you've spent a bit of time exploring the world, you can then hop back into those classic raids and strikes, with new character abilities helping teams come up with new co-op tactics. You know, I'll be the warlock opening up lots of healing rifts, so make sure to stick near me if you want to live. Uh, un unless, just make sure to get out the way when I fire up the magic flame sword. Yeah? South Park is back, and this time it's cruder and ruder than ever before, if that's even possible. Whilst we've known that South Park the Fractured Butt Hole has been a long time coming with a few setbacks along the way, it was E3 that we got a release date, October 17th. The trailer showed us more of what we can expect from this superhero themed adventure. Whilst in South Park's Stick of Truth, we played the part of a Dovahkin Skyrim-esque fantasy RPG, whereas the Fractured has taken a superhero's Marvel-esque stance. The South Park kids make a band of superheroes, but they fall out, splitting into two rival gangs. You again play the role of New Kid, a quiet, gassy little character with some neat customization options. We saw 20 minutes of gameplay too. The game looks great, embodying the style of South Park to an absolute T. Each character is hand animated, so the level of detail that's got into recreating the feel of the show is immense. Now, if there's anything we learned from this gameplay, it's that South Park will continue to do what South Park does best. Be completely and utterly offensive. Let's just say it involved a strip club, lap dances, rat poop, and lots of farting. Yeah, if you're easily offended or you're not one for toilet humor, this might not be the game for you. I, however, cannot wait. Crackdown 3 may be launching the same day as the Xbox One X, but as much as it is a showcase for the future of gaming, picking up that pad actually transported us back 10 years. The team at Sumo Games, who are making the story campaign part of the game, have done an amazing job of capturing the magic of Crackdown. You feel so damn powerful as you leap across rooftops and rain down death with weapons that can wipe out an army with a single shot. You want a gun that fires miniature black holes? Go right ahead and remember, the more you level up your firearms ability, the bigger those black holes are going to get. The game is a big believer in the bigger is better school of design. The city is twice the size of Pacific City and the tallest building is twice as tall as the agency tower. Climbing the original skyscraper remains one of our favorite Xbox 360 memories, so the idea of having to go twice as far is pretty exciting. Back down on the ground, the gangs are much smarter too. You don't just find the gang bosses hanging out on street corners, you need to provoke them out of hiding by taking down parts of the city that are precious to them. The more you poke them, the more vicious they get, filling the streets with more advanced weapons and defenses. In theory, you could provoke all the city's major gangs without ever actually taking down their bosses, leaving the whole city in a state of heightened chaos. As a result, no two cities will never quite feel the same, which will be great fun to discover when we explore each other's worlds in four-player co-op. Strange Brigade is a third-person shooter adventure game that we got hands-on with in co-op mode at E3, and it was seriously good fun. Strange Brigade is set in the 1930s, playing heavily on the idea of monster movies of the era, whilst also having an Indiana Jones-style feel to it. Created by Rebellion, the same lot that made Sniper Elite 4 and Zombie Army Trilogy, this new offering promises for a more light-hearted shoot-em-up, which is definitely best enjoyed with friends. In the section we played, we were tasked with taking out the undead and a horde of mummies that weren't quite as loving as the family variety. Through use of traps and a selection of weapons, including molotovs and shotguns, we took down the army of undead while suffering as minimal casualties as possible. Except when Matthew, our producer, set off a trap that cut me in half. Yeah. 
Driving gorgeous cars across melting hot deserts seems to be something of a theme in 2017. Of course, where Forza 7 rewards you for beautiful racing lines, Need for Speed Payback invites a more aggressive racing style. You're part of a squad of tarmac shredding criminals taking down a shadowy cartel at 100 miles per hour. Like 2015's Need for Speed, it's another open world, but it's a far more playful one. Rather than the eternal night in a grimy city, you're tearing up a casino city and the surrounding deserts. There are even hidden cars to find, which makes it sound a bit like Forza Horizon, which can only be a good thing. Customizing your car in every way possible remains a big focus for the series, but considering how violently you're expected to drive, we wonder if we should be getting too attached to these motors. In the mission we played, we had to use our supercar as a battering ram, knocking away smaller cars that are guarding a larger lorry that you're trying to rob. In these scenes, it's like you're playing a classic burnout game, complete with classic slow motion takedowns as bonnets wrap around telephone poles and cars flip over and explode. Considering we're too scared to get even the tiniest scratch in Forza's 4K supercars, it's great that EA allows us to let off some steam. Vampire is brought to us by Don't Nod, the same people behind Life is Strange and Remember Me. If you're familiar with these games at all, you'll know that Vampire is destined to have something different about it that sets it apart. The newest trailer was shown at E3, taking us on a trip through the dark and deadly world of early 1900s London. You'll be playing the part of newly turned vampire Dr. Jonathan Reed. You see what I mean about something different? A doctor who's also a vampire? Those things don't usually go hand in hand. London is being ravaged by the flu, but as a vampire, you're cursed with the urge to feed on those who your job vows you to heal. Talk about a clash of interests. The cool thing is that you'll be given a choice as to how to deal with this dilemma. You can give in and be the vampire, embracing the monster within and fighting and manipulating with your supernatural abilities. Or maybe you take your job very seriously. I mean, those years of training aren't gonna pay for themselves and you'll merely feed to survive. Yes, it's not perfect, but a man's gotta eat. Of course, you can complete the game without killing anyone, but you won't be able to level up. Who wins, your thirst for power or all that guilt weighing you down? A key mechanic will be manipulating and delving into the lives of those around you as you get into their minds, manipulate their actions and make choices that will affect all the citizens of London. Vampire looks set to make a deep, intriguing game with plenty of different play styles to suit every gamer. Make sure to check it out this November. Now, if you follow me on Xbox One, you'll know that I spend most of my week playing FIFA 17, so you just can't blame me for including FIFA 18 in this list. This year, EA are putting a lot of focus in capturing the unique character of football's biggest stars. Cover star Ronaldo has gone in for some advanced motion capture to translate every part of his personal style in the game. It's a level of crazy detail that is going to look especially good on Xbox One X. Hell, I'm just waiting to see all that grass in 4K. We be able to count the individual blades? That's really the question. Another really fun development this year is the continuation of the journey, the RPG story mode introduced in FIFA 17. If you've never played it, it's a bit like a Bioware RPG, only instead of trying to make peace with alien races, you're trying to earn the respect of a team of big sweaty football superstars. This year, Alex Hunter's career continues and EA are going all out to make it feel as real as possible, bringing in professional footballers, TV pundits, and even some famous YouTube faces to add some real world drama into the mix. Of course, if EA are looking for a gobby video host to shoot some last minute scenes, my rates are cheap and I look great covered in those tiny motion capture balls. You have my number. Rounding out another epic footballing package is the addition of icons to FIFA Ultimate Team. These replace legends and let you get your hands on some iconic players from history. And if you pre-order on Xbox One, you can start building that team early with three days early access to the game and a loan of new icon Ronaldo Nazario. Yep, it looks like this is going to eat up my time for another year. Cuphead is a game that I am so unbelievably excited for that the fact we got a release date announced at E3 has me over the moon. On September 29th, the 30s style cartoon run and gun platformer will be coming to our Xbox Ones. Cuphead is one of those games that does something that can be hard to pull off these days. It does something completely unique and different. The old school Disney vibe of the 30s looks amazing on screen, with the animation being hand drawn onto painted backgrounds. Considering in the 1930s they had 24 frames per second, the 60 frames per 
second shows this art style as it's never been seen before. The trailer we were shown was short yet sweet and gave us a good insight as to what we can expect. Basically, you play the role of Cuphead who has lost a bet with the devil and must repay it. You'll venture through levels with the emphasis being on boss battles. The combat is tricky and you'll find yourself dying a lot, but due to infinite lives and the fact that you can keep weapons between deaths means it won't be too much of a frustrating experience. If you feel like delving into the past with a friend, then Cuphead has a two-player co-op mode where your friend can play as Mugman. Ah, Mugman, the hero we never knew we needed. For all you crockery obsessed gamers out there, make sure to check out Cuphead. Now, if you've been watching Xbox on these last few weeks, you'll know that I'm more than a little bit excited for the latest Call of Duty. And yes, I know I'm a COD fanboy and all that, but with some of the hardest people to impress and everything I've seen has done exactly that. The big news is that the series is returning to its roots with a much more grounded campaign set during World War II. It looks absolutely stunning and with some incredible set pieces like being trapped in a collapsing bell tower that make you feel like you're right in the heart of the craziest war movie ever made. Over in multiplayer, this is a return to a much purer online experience. You won't see people running along walls and doing crazy double jumps through the air with jetpacks. This is all about watching your corners, taking precision shots and finding the smartest routes around the new multiplayer maps. It's just so much fun using older weapons. I'm already addicted to the BAR and the MP40, both of which feel like monsters in your hands. I'm also really sold on the new war mode, which is an objective based game that keeps you in a constant tug of war with the enemy as you try and achieve a series of four minute long objectives, like capturing a house, repairing a bridge and guiding a tank to safety. It's all about building to an epic final push, so I'll definitely be playing a lot of this. Honestly, there's so many awesome new additions to Call of Duty World War 2 that you should definitely check out our separate feature about the multiplayer mode. Just follow the link on screen and I'll give you all the details. Super Lucky's Tale has to be this year's most adorable announcement from E3. A sequel to Lucky's Tale, a launch title for the Oculus Rift, this bright, lovable platformer looks to be fun for all ages. In Super Lucky's Tale, you'll be playing the part of Lucky, a fox who's on a quest to find his inner strength and help his sister rescue the Book of Ages from Jinx, the big bad. Super Lucky's Tale plays just like you'd expect, a fun platformer that's easy to get your head around and is full to the brim with collectibles to get completely obsessed with. Much like ukulele, you'll be traversing up, down, and across a beautifully bright world, looking for letters and plenty of other goodies, and then going back and doing the level again when you realize you missed some secret tunnel or some brightly colored doodad. If you're looking for something a little lighter and brighter to get into, then check out Super Lucky's Tale this November. One of the biggest surprises at E3 this year was a second outing for BJ Blazkowicz, returning to fight the good fight in a universe where the Nazis won World War II. His first game was an awesome mix of violent arcade gunplay and kind of scripted story moments that you might expect from a game like Bioshock, and the new Colossus promises to deliver even more. Take the opening level for example. Set five months after the explosive conclusion to the first game, it sees BJ having problems with his legs and having to fight off a Nazi invasion from a wheelchair. You're much slower and harder to maneuver than you usually are, but you're still very handy with a machine gun and the submarine you're protecting is full of microwave traps that will melt any soldier dumb enough to run through them. Oh, and if you get close enough for a melee kill, you can smash heads against the wheels of your chair. It's a totally crazy demo and one of the best things we managed to play at E3. The demo ended with a great cliffhanger. We won't spoil it for you here, but it really makes us want to play much, much more. Thankfully, we don't have to wait long as it will arrive on Xbox One on October 27th. Now, I for one was very excited when the trailer for Life is Strange Before the Storm filled the screen during the Xbox conference. As a big fan of the first offering, the idea that we'll be able to head back to Arcadia Bay and all the emotional drama it has to offer is really exciting. During E3, I got to see a behind closed doors presentation, which gave some great insight into what we can expect. First things first, it's a prequel set three years before the events of Life is Strange. The biggest change is that you'll be playing the part of Chloe rather than Matt this time round. And of course, as you won't be Max, you won't have control of her time rewind powers. 
Yeah, but you gotta face through the horrors of teenage life without a superpower to help you when you mess up. Chloe is going through a difficult time. Her father died two years before, Max has left and lost touch, and school is a nightmare. It's during this time she meets Rachel, aka the missing character in Life is Strange. Finding out more about her promises to be exciting for fans of the series and for newcomers too. The three-part adventure begins on the 31st of August. EA's first Star Wars Battlefront captured the sights and sounds of Star Wars, but maybe didn't capture the epic scale of the series. You definitely can't say the same about the follow-up, which is growing the game in every single way, from improved character customization to a proper single-player campaign that tells an original Star Wars tale. Multiplayer is also now a far deeper game, with four character classes that each have a role to play in battle and a revamping of the power-up system. Rather than picking up a magic token that turns you into Darth Vader, you now earn battle points for every action that you do, and these can be spent on a variety of weapons, vehicles, and hero transformations. It's not unlike Halo 5's rec point system, and means you only need a little patience to try the game's best bits. Save up the currency and you can transform into Rey from The Force Awakens or Darth Maul from Episode 1. Yes, those characters never actually met in a film, but Battlefront 2 is basically mashing up all the films into one epic celebration of all things Star Wars. Come on, we get to see who would win a fight between Darth Maul and Han Solo. That's going to be epic. Middle Earth Shadow of War promises to take everything that made Shadow of Mordor so amazing and just improve that tenfold. The game will be much, much bigger with more of a variety on the types of landscapes you'll be exploring and the things that inhabit them. One of the standout best things about Shadow of Mordor was the Nemesis system. This allows enemies to remember their battles with you and get promoted up the system, which led to epic revenge battles with war chiefs who earlier on had stuck a spear in your face. With Shadow of War, they're bringing in fortress assaults, which are basically enemy fortresses that you need to conquer and make your own. Doing this correctly is a case of proper planning. For example, if it turns out your enemy is weak against fire, then you'll know you want one of your buffs to be increased fire damage. Or perhaps you want to get the mighty Drake Dragon involved too. Yes, you have to conquer him first, which can lead to horrible death, but once you have him, you just know he's going to do a hell of a lot of fire damage to anyone who crosses your path. You can also overcome your enemy and get them to join your side, which is always super satisfying. Once you've fought the battle and killed the war chief, you can then appoint someone from your own army to rule the fort. Fortress. Depending on who you pick, the entire aesthetic and side missions available in the area will change, so trying out different chiefs in different locations will definitely be worth a go. Of course, that's just a tiny look at everything Shadow of War will have to offer, so if you're interested in what else is in store, then make sure to check it out this October. The original Evil Within remains one of the most hellish games we've played on Xbox. Think about it, you're trapped in the mind of a lunatic, being chased by horrific beasts straight out of the scariest Japanese horror films, and you've got about 8 bullets to keep you alive through the whole game. It's the kind of experience you crawl out of at the other end, pledging never to submit yourself to that kind of horror again. Well, in the Evil Within 2, you're submitting yourself to that kind of horror again. Yes, having only just escaped the freaky mind of a lunatic, our hero Sebastian is convinced to enter yet another hellish dimension, this time trying to save the life of his daughter. This world is just as twisted as the first, but now includes more open areas along with the tight linear levels of the original. While we normally love to explore, a bigger world means more things trying to kill you and more ways to run out of ammo. So even though we once again get to wield one of the tastiest shotguns in gaming, it's not like we can go crazy with it. Every shot has to count. What gets me really excited about The Evil Within 2 is just how little of the game has been shown and how soon it's out. It arrives in just over three months time and has only shown a few minutes of action. It looks like we get to explore another mansion straight out of Resident Evil and there appears to be a town populated with maniacs, but outside of that there's a whole lot of nasty surprises waiting to jump out at us and we just can't wait. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is the Battle Royale style deathmatch that sees 100 players against each other in a giant island battle to the death. Players can try and survive all on their lonesome, or you can choose to team up with other players to try and take down the opposing enemies. Of course, there can only be one winner, so it all gets a little tense at the end. Someone who was once your friend is now the only thing stopping you from coming out on top. 
players find themselves dropped into a single deserted island with plenty of buildings to hide in, weapons to grab, and vehicles to plow into people. At the beginning, it's tricky to take other people out. It's a vast enough island that there's plenty of hiding spots. The difficult thing is that as time goes on, the playing zone shrinks, forcing you to get closer and closer to your enemies. It's a proper tense affair, and every time you hear the sound of gunfire in the distance, you'll feel your whole body go tense. This crazy experience has only been available on PC beforehand, but it's coming to Xbox One's preview program later on this year. Who's got it in them to be number one? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I just can't escape the heat at the moment. I'm currently melting into a puddle in the Xbox One studio, while on the TV, Forza 7's Dubai track is burning a hole in the TV. This is a scorching showcase for 4K gaming, with heat shimmer distorting the desert landscape and tiny grains of sand blowing over tarmac, so hot you could fry an egg on it. Inside the car you can make out immersive details like shaking wing mirrors and the wobbly wires across the dashboard, but the idea of sitting inside that hot cockpit is just too much for me right now. Of course, things cool off thanks to one of Forza 7's other new tricks, dynamic weather. Seeing a storm unleash hell on the track is another visual showcase, but it has severe impact on your racing. Rain will dynamically puddle up on difficult corners, but even a change in cloud coverage can make the track look completely different and make it hard to stick to familiar racing lines. The racing wizards at turn 10 want the tracks to feel totally different every time you tackle them, and so far, it's a big success. And then there are hundreds of great ideas, making this the biggest Forza yet. You've got over 700 cars to collect, a much more complete career mode, over 300 pieces of driver gear to customize your new avatar with, and even the option to have music on your OneDrive blasting out from the speakers along the racetrack. Forza has long been a master of capturing the perfection of vehicles, but this iteration really promises to nail the fun and thrills of race day too. And hey, come on, it's released in chilly October. Those hot deserts will be far more agreeable. It's safe to say that Assassin's Creed Origins totally blew me away at this year's E3. As an Assassin's Creed fan, I found myself less into the series as time has gone on, but Assassin's Creed Origins looks set to reel me back in, hook, line and sinker. Assassin's Creed used to be once a year, but I really think the two year break has done them good. They come back with fresh, innovative content which looks pretty as anything. Origins tells the story of Bayek as he works to protect his people from threats. This time round the story is set in ancient Egypt, a world that is open to so many incredible possibilities. Abilities. One of my favourite things I did in my hands-on was gallop across the desert on the back of my steed, watching the gorgeous sand spread out before me. I mean, we're talking a seriously stunning backdrop here. Assassin's Creed Origins goes back to the story's roots, with Bayek being labelled as the very first assassin. It's the start of the Brotherhood story and will give fans of the series a great insight as to how it all began. There are some cool new gameplay features added too, like combat being more about sideswiping and dodging, and also the added help of your eagle friend. Let him loose to survey the enemy lines and scout out possible targets before going in yourself. It's a cool mechanic and I for one can't wait to delve back into it this October. So there we have it, 18 games that you're going to be able to get your hands on later this year. Make sure to let us know in the comments what your favourites are as well. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And hit that like button whilst you're at it if you enjoyed this video and check out last week's list feature too. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.